So good evening boys and girls and welcome back to another video. Now, when I made the switch to Micro Four Thirds a couple of months ago, somewhere in the comment section of one of the videos, somebody left a comment along the lines of, say goodbye to ultra wide. So today we've got a seven and a half millimeter lens from TT Artisan. 15 millimeter full frame equivalent with the Micro Four Thirds crop factor. Very, very usable. Now this kind of leaves me with a bit of a conundrum because I now have two seven and a half millimeter ultra wide angle lenses and i'm going to be honest i only really need one and it's probably going to be this one right here so it kind of begs the question as to what am i going to do with the other one i kind of guess maybe one of you might want it so if you are interested in my other seven and a half millimeter f 2.8 from seven artisans don't actually have it there it is. Um, I'll give it away. I'll give it away to one of you lot. So if you're new here, give it a subscribe. It really does help the channel out and it helps me and it encourages me. Give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below telling me why you think you should win this lens. And on the 1st of May, I'll pick one comment at random and that person will win a free lens. How does that sound? So now we've done that nonsense, let's go take some pictures with this one. Alright, so let's have a look at this lens then. It's a 7.5mm, it is a fisheye lens, so it's got a really bulbous front element. Now, as I do a lot of this long exposure photography, bulbous front elements kind of mean no ND filters, and that's kind of frustrating, which is one of the reasons why I've not used the lens I got from 7 Artisans. There's no way of attaching filters to it, and for long exposures, you kind of need filters. So, TT Artisan have come up with a really clever sort of solution to this. So, this lens does actually have a 10 stop ND filter in it. It just happens to be on the back of the lens. It threads on at the back. Now this is by no means a unique solution, but it's the first time I've seen it on such an ultra wide angle lens, especially on the micro four third stuff. So good on TT Artisan for throwing that in there. I think that's a really clever little solution. So let's get stuck in and see what else we can do with the tide and the posts down here at Spain Point. Hoop. No, behave. So if you've seen any of my stuff before, you may know that I have a real penchant for these lobster crab pots that you see lying around on the beach in Spain Point. So here we go. It's waiting with a two second timer. That one may work fine. We're using a two second timer. We're around about two and a half seconds ISO 200 F8. And we're really just timing it as the waves come in and getting them washing back out. Leaving all the white streaks and the white, the white marks in the surf. It looks quite fun. So here's the image. So for this next one, I'm just shooting between these two sets of groins. So we've got a large set of groins on the right hand side and a small set of groins on the left hand side. I'll stop this down as far as it will go. It'll go down to F11. So it's F2 to F11, this lens. Let's have a look. So eight seconds. Let's wait for one of these waves to start sneaking back out. There's loads of texture back there. This wave's probably about to soak me. Am I going to get wet? Yes. Yes, I am. That's cold. So look, we might get some more streaks. There we go. Oh, I quite like that. That really gives a long exposure effect. Here's that photograph. So another thing that you're going to notice about this lens is, well, it is a fisheye lens, but there's no fisheyeness going on. It is a fairly normal looking lens, as long as you're kind of close to the camera. The further away your subject seems to get, the more distorted the horizon seems to be. So if I stand a little bit further away from the camera like I am now, well, we're getting a fairly reasonably usable video shot here from this. Are we honest? No, by the way, this has been shot at F2 as well, because why not? But yeah, it's usable, isn't it? It's not distorted like you would imagine from a fisheye lens. It's another reason what's kind of put me off with these in the past on the full frame stuff is fisheye to me is that little planet circular thing, but this perfectly usable. Perfectly usable for video and photo. So let me give you a quick demonstration of that fisheye effect that I was talking about. So right now the camera is fairly level on this tripod. If I tilt it down, you see as soon as we start to get into the lens distortion at the top, that is when you start to get the board horizons. And again, if I tilt this up a little bit, again, we're at the bottom end of the lens distortion. You can see we get the uh, 
the board horizons there. So as long as the camera stays reasonably centered and level, perfectly usable. So another fun thing about these ultra wide angle lenses, these fisheye lenses, is their ability to focus really quite close to the subjects. So there is this rock down here, we're just catching a little bit of the last of the light before it dips below the bend behind us. Now I've set the image stabilization to 7.5 millimeters. Remember this is an Olympus camera. So as long as you dial in the focal length of the lens that you're using and the camera, the image stabilization will know how much to compensate. So even though this is a manual only lens, the image stabilization does still work. So I am gonna get reasonably close to this. I'm going to turn on the focus peaking on the camera, which is that button there. And if I just zip around with the focus, it looks fairly decent to me, that's in focus, and best mode away. So here's a reasonably close focused photograph of just a random rock on the beach. Shot at f2.8 for blaring background purposes. <laughs> The best way that I've found to walk around handheld with this lens is to throw the camera into aperture priority mode. It may be a setting I've got set up on this camera, but the only way I can get a sort of real-time exposure preview is in aperture priority mode. Manual mode completely just darkens everything out until you've taken the photograph and you're kind of just hitting and hoping to some degree. Like I say, it may be a setting that I've got set up, but I've found this is working really, really well for me. It's a fun little lens to use, as long as you can sort of work with the lens distortion that I showed you earlier on. Once I've figured out the lens distortion, how to work with it, the best shooting mode to use with it, I'm actually having quite a lot of fun with it. It's got some really nice golden light going on as well. It's really helping the photographs, I think. So yeah, let's start heading back towards the car and let's see what else we can take. I've taken the ND filter off now. The light's dropping that much. There's no real need for strong ND filters. So everything else is just handheld, having a bit of fun and seeing what photographs we can grab with this lens. All right, so this probably looks a bit silly. I'm sat in this long grass, but I really do like the way that this high tide shelter is just catching this golden light on the face of it. And I'm kind of wondering if we can't shoot through some of these grass, just blare it out, make a bit of a frame and just see what we can't do with it. So let's have a lay around and roll around in the grass and see what we can do. Now, it helps if you turn the camera on, of course. And there we go. It's focus peaking on. We're wide open now at f2. There's a little grass from just in the way. I don't like that. There we go. That's got an unobstructed view. Let's just use the exposure compensation a little bit. Try and catch it before the wind blows one up. And they're down. There we go. Oh, that's really hurting my back. Here's the photograph. Check out this old tree branch here, it's just catching this golden light that's just setting on this sand really quite nicely. There's some really just subtle warm light on that. I kind of wonder if we can take a photograph of it. So let's grab the camera and have a look. Here's the camera. Let's have a look. So we're at F5.6. I want to get down quite low to this one. I just want to shoot across it, really get some of the warm tones. But I'm just highlighting on some of the branches here. It looks really quite fun. So I've got the focus peaking on. We've got all of the branch in focus by the looks of it. Uh, what are we at? F4. F4, 320th of a second, and ISO 200. Oh, look. Now we're just going to try and get a little bit closer, just to make it a little bit bigger in the frame. When you're walking on sand, if you're coming across something that's not been walked on before, start further back and edge your way close. Otherwise, if you start close to it, you run the risk of getting your own footprints in the photograph, and that's not what you want. This is very, it's very um, undisturbed, is the word I'm looking for. It's very undisturbed sand. I like it. Let's get a bit closer. Still all in focus. Here we go. Here's a photograph. So we're about 20 minutes out from sunset as it stands and there's a lot of clouds starting to appear, sort of high altitude stuff, the other stuff that tends to catch colour 
when you get a sunrise or a sunset. I'm wondering if it's maybe worth spending the next few minutes finding a subject that we can use and get a sunset photograph. I just don't know what at the minute. I'm struggling to see anything on the beach where we are that may work. It needs to be a big sort of dominating foreground with the sky in the background. So I'm going to sort of think this one through. But I can see all around me there are just little pockets of colour just starting to appear now in the clouds. So let's get looking, let's get walking hopefully find a subject to get a nice sunset photograph with with this this seven and a half millimeter lens no sadly the sunset photo wasn't to be there is just nothing at this end of the beach if i was way down the other end with the lighthouses then fair game the lighthouses are a great subject but the only thing i found was this board and the board is this kind of word for it really it doesn't make the greatest of subjects does it so i think it's time to go back to the car and get warmed up a little bit it is a uh, well, the weather's turned a little bit chilly now, the wind's blowing, it's, uh, it's cold. I think I'm ready to go home. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, do not forget about the giveaway that I mentioned at the start of this video. So, give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And just leave a comment down below and let me know what you would use a 7.5mm f2.8 lens from 7 Artisans for. Not the one that I've been using today, the one that's at home that I showed you earlier in the video that I don't actually have with me right now. So that being said, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, do all of the stuff I aforementioned, the likes and subscribes and all that stuff. Until the next time, peace and goodbye.